Hi everyone, and welcome to this platform story. My name is Simone Sciarrati, and I will be taking you through our journey from uh, zero to platform at Meltwater. 15 minutes is not a lot of time to describe a six years journey, uh, but I hope it will be enough to highlight uh, key learning points and the changes that were necessary at different stages of our evolution. Uh, I really hope you will join the Q&A session uh, so we can dive deeper in some into the details. So a, bit, a little bit about Meltwater. Meltwater is a software as a service company. We help our customers better understand, influence, and engage with their key stakeholders. You can see a list of the services that we offer to our customers on this page. And if you want to learn more about it, you can head over to meltwater.com. So in order to understand our journey, I thought we could start from what we believe is a good definition of a successful internal developer platform. Uh, I have highlighted a few uh, key points in this definition. Self-service, uh, so it means, uh, needs, this means that teams need to be able to interact with the platform without being blocked uh, by processes or dependencies on, or, on other teams. Product, it needs to be, the platform needs to be treated as a product. Uh, teams can make use of the platform, which means the platform needs to be optional and it needs to increase uh, the pace of delivery. So in short, it needs to solve a real problem, otherwise uh, teams won't be using it. And it needs to be effective at doing that. And it needs excellent support. <clears throat> when I joined Meltwater in 2015, I joined the technical operations team. Uh, at that time, Meltwater was already a global company with engineers distributed in multiple locations all around the world. And we were organized in, uh, in multiple uh, development teams responsible for the Meltwater product development uh, and a single technical operations team that was responsible for the production environment and the release processes. All of our software was running in the data center and uh, once a uh, release was ready, the artifact would be made available to the technical operations team that would take care of deploying it to production. Uh, this structure had served us well for a few years, but at this point we were starting to feel the limits of, of such setup. In particular, the, the release process was low. It was cumbersome, uh, error-prone. Uh, technical operations hadn't grown proportionally as much as the development teams, and now it was becoming a bottleneck. Local development experience wasn't great either, uh, and, and it was difficult to replicate locally uh, a representative uh, production environment. And generally speaking, there was uh, building uh, pressure in the company to, to improve this process and in our velocity. Uh, 2015 was, was also prime time for Docker, and a few of our developers had already successfully started to use Docker and Docker Compose locally to improve their, their developer uh, development experience. And uh, it was also early days of container orchestrations, orchestration with promise to greatly simplify uh, the process of deploying an application uh, to abstract away uh, infrastructure and standardize the environments, which was an appealing uh, prospect for technical operations. So a small team of developers and operations engineers worked together uh, to build a system that aimed to improve both developer and, and operations lives. Uh, combining these two off-the-shelf solutions gave us a solid start, but it wasn't enough. We had uh, things like networking, Secrets management, uh, good development workflow were lacking and the existing uh, add-ons uh, were not really integrating well with, uh, with our environment. So we developed uh, and open sourced a few tools to complete, to, to complete what Docker and Mesos could, uh, could provide out of the box. And this was uh, one of the first learning. It was the first time that we had gone down the road of creating custom software to support our infrastructure. And it highlighted that the tooling and add-ons uh, that are tailored to the company needs is where the value of an internal platform is and what dif differentiates it from, uh, from an off-the-shelf product. In the end, we had, a, we had a solution that improved developer experience. It abstracted uh, away the details of, details of the infrastructure and was managed through a GitOps workflow. And it simplified the, the previous process uh, enormously. But there was no mandate to, to move all our applications to this new, to this new service. Uh, so we started also getting used to the idea of, uh, of treating it as a, as a product and marketing it internally. Uh, what was lacking still was, uh, was self -serve, uh, the self-serve aspect. Um, technical operations was still the, the team 
in charge of production. And, and, and so they were, they still needed to approve every, every deployment. Uh, but even with this limitation, it was, uh, it was a very successful experiment that lasted for, for years. Now that we had a technical solution to this problem, the last obstacle to making it a self-service platform was, was trust. We needed a, cult a cultural shift to empower our developers to take full advantage of what we had built. This cultural shift was already in the works, uh, likely, and soon after, the company as a whole started a journey towards uh, autonomous full, uh, full stack teams. Development, development teams would be managing all aspects of the development lifecycle and be trusted to build and manage their production infrastructure. The technical operations function was now going to be decentralized and embedded in, in, in every team. Uh, this was a big challenge and uh, as any big challenge, it was met with a mix of, uh, of excitement and, and doubts. Uh, how can we move quickly and safely? How would stability be affected? Uh, what about quality, cost, security? I can share that for us, this has been an extremely successful, uh, successful transformation with uh, velocity, quality and stability massively uh, improved uh, all around. But of course, all these questions are, were very pressing at the time. So the next step, once we, we, uh, we had autonomous teams, was to remove any obstacle between these teams and, and, and their de delivering their, their code to production. Uh, so we, with no approval step in the delivery process, teams could now deploy their software to production without having to depend on anyone else. Uh, but this raised a new question. Uh, what happens when, when something goes wrong? What does, where does the responsibility of the platform end and the responsibility of the user start. Uh, so we needed to have, um, we needed to, to establish a clear contract with the users like, and this would only work if we had excellent observability so that when something would go wrong, we would actually be able to understand what the problem was and define and, and understand which, which, um, which team's responsibility it was. This was not all. I mean, on top of, of, uh, of moving to autonomous teams, we also asked autonomous teams to slowly uh, and uh, move their, their workloads from the data centers to, to the cloud. Um, and this was a challenge in itself because at the time we didn't have enough uh, resources to embed in every single autonomous teams with, uh, with enough uh, cloud experience. So what we did is that we collected uh, the internal cloud expertise uh, that we had into a team uh, whose mission was to facilitate this migration. And I joined this team and, and uh, what we focused on was the most common tasks every team would face. Uh, create an AWS account, create a VPC and so on. And what we produced was, was libraries and tools that teams could use to bootstrap their, their cloud environments, but also invested time in documenting the, the best practices uh, since teams were autonomous, there was no mandate to use our tooling or libraries. And, uh, <clears throat> and as a company, we made a decision to, to mandate best practice principles, not the specific implementation of it. So for example, use infrastructure as code for, for, for your infrastructure, but not necessarily use this or that technology, uh, Terraform or, or CloudFormation. And this was the, effectively the beginning of, uh, of the platform team journey. Um, our products were at this point where the container orchestration platform that we had in the data center with the observability associated with it. And uh, this bunch of Terraform modules that uh, facilitated the migration to the cloud and best practices documentation. Uh, and for all of these, we could check almost all the boxes. Um, we didn't have product expertise in our team at this point. And, and also we didn't know how much we needed it. Um, so go forward two years uh, or one year, two years. So you can imagine with autonomy came a wide variety of, of different diverse solution in the cloud. Uh, since teams were autonomous, we could use anything. Uh, we, could, we saw anything from you know, using ECS, EC2 instances, Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, this is not a bad thing per se, per se as uh, our autonomous teams could gain knowledge and experiment uh, with what was available in the cloud. And also they found some really great solutions. Um, so for some ways they were trailblazing the, the way to the cloud. 
but it also resulted in a growing pain for many development teams because they had to spend a decent chunk of their time managing infrastructure just to be able to ship their code to users. Um, and as a platform team, uh, we, we were torn because we, on one side, we wanted to help making this pain go away, making it easier to get uh, to ship code. But on the other side, we didn't want to rush to conclusion and, and, and potentially build a solution that to, to the wrong problem. So where should we start? Uh, we had recently welcomed a dedicated product manager uh, to our team that showed us uh, what it meant to treat our platform as a product. So, so what we started doing is, uh, is running customer discovery sessions uh, to understand where we should focus our efforts. Our goal was to understand what the pros and cons of the existing solutions uh, were and, and what was painful still for the teams. Um, once we, we got all of this information and we processed this feedback, we had a clear idea of what was uh, non-negotiable for our users. For example, self service, they, they did not want to have anyone in their way. We also knew that a migration would require time and effort uh, from teams. So whatever we would come up with had to be so much better than the current solution that it should be easy for the teams to make a case uh, for investing the time and resources in a migration. Um, and we also set clear expectations. We knew this wouldn't be a solution for every problem. So we never expected to have 100% adoption. Uh, so when we started the development of, uh, of cloud container orchestration, uh, we decided to engage in a close collaboration with the team so that we could reduce the feedback cycle. Um, we knew that to be successful, we'd have to work with a team that, that felt real pain and also, but also at the time to and resources to dedicate to, dedicate to us. Um, and we also tried to choose a team uh, that had uh, enough boys in the company to some extent, because we had hopes that if we were successful together, this team would champion uh, our product within the company. So the, we started with a, with a collaboration that started for a few, lasted for a few weeks. And we learned that good documentation is just as important as the product itself. Um, for example, if, if the product is, is excellent, but uh, onboarding is not a pleasant experience, teams will not just we just not adopt it. Uh, good documentation is also important because we will help lowering the time investing, invested in supporting your users in the long term. And support itself uh, will take a large chunk of your time in the future, but it can also be an important differentiator for your success. Uh, great customer experience can become a driver for adoption as well. And so we started getting some tractions and uh, teams were migrating to the, this new service and Everything was going great uh, until we, we had a complete outage. So we completely wiped out uh, cluster and, uh, and the applications on it. Uh, this lasted for half an hour. Uh, it was a very, very tough moment uh, that could, we thought it could undermine uh, our efforts and uh, slow down or even uh, stop the adoptions of, of this new product. But we decided, uh, nonetheless, that the, the only right way course of action was to, to run a blameless, blameless post-mortem and, and then publish it openly for everyone else in the company. And the response was overwhelmingly positive. Uh, we ended up uh, gaining trust as a result of the transparency with which we had uh, handled uh, this, uh, this incident. And so this was a good learning. And, and since then, we, there's been many other post-mortems. Um, so what happened uh, next? Uh, our platform has evolved to offer, to offer more services uh, around CICD, observability, and so on. Uh, we learned that, I mean, adding new services is easy. It's, it's removing that is slow and boring. Uh, so we, we had to be ready to invest our own time into helping others with migrations. So we can't expect uh, other teams to just adopt a new product uh, uh, on their own. All of our services uh, have their North Star, uh, and we start. We keep aiming in, the, in that direction, and we try to measure our success, whatever whatever measure makes sense for 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 the service itself, adoption, velocity, and so on. And we also learned that you should be prepared for success beyond your wildest imagination, and and so prepare for both architectural 
ability to scale, but also to make sure that the company has a commitment to, to support your team uh, as your platform grows. And we, we didn't stop listening. We, we keep listening to we run regular customer discoveries. We keep our eyes on Slack. We, we keep our ears open a coffee conversation. There's a lot of opportunities for, for gathering feedback. And every individual in our team contributes to our roadmap. Also, don't forget, don't forget why we're here. Uh, our job is to make our fellow developers uh, life easier. We don't want to fall in love with our with our technical solutions because technology changes, but but the missions remains the same, and we should stay focused on it. And uh, last but not least, uh, don't forget to celebrate. We platform work is somehow sometimes it's invisible. Uh, but so you should take the time to stop and, and celebrate the impact you had uh, on, on the lives of the fellow developers. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're interested in developing a successful internal platform, feel free to reach out. We're hiring and hope to see you at the Q&A session so we can, uh, we can have a conversation about, um, about this process. Uh, have a great day.